And the ne next one is... And the last presentation um, is from Anna Severin. She is a Swedish sports scientist who has been working in Australia for the past six years and now decided to stay three more years to do her PhD. And she is going to present the association between previous groin pain and aberrant kinematic during instep kicking from two approach angles. Thank you. Uh, thank, um, thank you everyone for staying awake this long, I guess. Um, and I also like to thank Per and Adam for inviting me to come along and do this little talk for you. Um, I am presenting my honors research findings, so if you find some gaps in here, do apologize in advance. Um, I'm not going to go through again and talk a bit more about the stuff that we've already covered on the importance of this type of research and how common groin pain is in athletes. What I want to talk about a little bit more though is something that we haven't really spoken about yet and that is pain and how pain or previous pain even affects movement. We do know that uh, previous pain can affect how both how a muscle function and how we move. If anyone's ever sprained an ankle you would know that I'm telling the truth. Research has also showed that we don't actually need the physical onset of pain or any physical damage to the muscle for this to happen, but that the pure anticipation of pain is enough to trigger an aberrant response. So what we wanted to test for was to see if there was any differences in kicking kinematics in the hip joints and pelvis in players with and without a history of groin pain. And we wanted to see if these players adapted differently to a constraint imposed by an altered approach angle. Because as you know, in football, we do kick from a lot of different angles. When you do any kind of pain research, it is important to consider an important question here, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Is, the pain, is it the pain that came first and then caused these aberrant kinematics? Or do these players have an aberrant kinematic to start off with that then made them more susceptible to the pain? What we did, we had a total of 22 semi-professional male football players, 11 of whom had uh, reported some form of groin pain within the past 12 months, but were currently considered rehabilitated and were currently competitively playing. And we had the other 11 which made up the control group that had no, pre his no previous history of groin pain at all. I might be a bit controversial here when, with if you read this last dot point, that we took no regards as to the nature of the groin pain, the diagnosis or treatment or rehabilitation whatsoever. It was simply a yes or no question, have you had previous groin pain? We used a pretty standardized biomechanical analysis where each player performed 12 kicks from two different approach angles. We used the angle of 45 degrees, which has been shown to be a normal approach angle. And we utilized also 60 degrees, which has been used in research before, so it was simple or it was easy to compare our findings. So what did we find? Regardless of approach angle, if we start off looking at pelvic orientation, um, and let's see if I can get this thing to work. The blue lines here is the sagittal plane, which are the, the ones that are significantly different. So we got pelvic orientation at backswing and at ball contact. If we combine... I should also mention, I um, forgot that. Uh, from now on, I'll refer to the previously groin pain group as the PGP group. Um, if we look at these combined with swing hip, sagittal plane range of motion throughout the, the kicking action, we see at, at back swing, the PGP group uh, utilized more anterior pelvic tilt combined with less hip extension. At ball contact, we get again more posterior pelvic tilt combined again with more hip flexion. So it's almost like they're reluctant to open up that hip joint. They're keeping it closed and shut a little bit longer. We also found differences about the stance hip. Uh, at ball contact, stance hip velocity was different in all three planes of motion. However, I want you to really focus, kind of step back and just look at the distribution between the three planes. With the control group, we can see that we have a massive favoring in the sagittal plane and not so much in the other two. Whilst within the PGP group, it's much even, more evenly spread across the three planes of motion. Stance velocity across the entire um, action also differed in the frontal and the sagittal planes. When we threw in the angle of uh, the appro and altered approach angle, 
and looked at the al uh, adaptations. The control group utilized several adaptations that all are, are all consistent with previous research. If we look for the same adaptations in the groin pain group, we found one that was the same, and that was a more laterally rotated pelvis at backswing, which is probably because they're coming in at a different angle. And then we found a more abducted stance hip at impact, which was something that has not been reported previously. A um, little bit on coordination we found as well. So these graphs are face plane graphs, and I will explain it to the people in the audience who has not seen these before. This is pelvic, in the tra pelvic motion in the transverse plane, and this is the control group only. So in the, along the x-axis here we have displacement, whilst on the y-axis we have velocity. So this is demonstrating from the point of backswing throughout the entire movement up until ball contact, which is marked by the little x. Blue line representing 45 degrees, red line representing 60 degrees, and this is pretty much what we would expect to see. We see the same kind of curve, just shifted back approximately 15 degrees with this altered approach angle. When we look at the PGP group, there's a few things I want to highlight here. Uh, we're not reaching the exact the same peak velocity, so there, you can see that the, the curves will reach much lower. You can also see that although we do have this 15 degree discrepancy at backswing, by the time we reach peak velocity, they're not quite 15 degrees apart anymore. And by the time we reach ball contact, they're definitely not 15 degrees apart anymore. If we're looking at the similar um, graphs for stance hip coordination, and this can get a little bit cluttered, but stay with me. So this is again the control group for all three planes of motion, so velocity on the y-axis, displacement on the x-axis. Um, sagittal plane, frontal plane, transverse plane. What I really want you to notice here are these rapid decreases in velocity just prior to ball contact in all three planes of motion. Biomechanical principles tells us that when you're performing an open kinetic complex movement, once you finish generating a force about one segment, you want to stabilize that segment, which is represented in the rapid decrease in velocity prior to ball contact. So by the time we hit the ball, we want our stance hip to be nice and stable. If we're looking at the, the PGP group again, we can see this rapid de nice deceleration in the sagittal plane. But if we look at the front door plane, there's hardly anything happening. And although we have a little bit in the transverse plane, it is not really anything compared to what's happening in the control group. So really to sum things up here, there are apparent differences in kinematics of the hip, hips and pelvis between these two groups. The interesting thing that we notice here is that although there were these differences, there were no differences in the swing foot at ball contact, which suggests that there might be a presence of alterations or uh, compensations elsewhere along the kinetic chain. And we also found the differences in coordination. Now, what does this mean for the chicken or the egg question that I rose before? It doesn't really answer the question, um, but it definitely gives a little bit of light on that we might need to consider how rehabilitated these players are. These are all players that have been out injured with pain. Um, some of them have seen GP, some of them have seen physiotherapists, some have seen manual therapists, and they all had these problems. So. If the chicken or the pain came first and caused these kinematic adaptations, then we might need to consider were they actually rehabilitated. Um, if the egg or the pain, or sorry, if the egg came first, or that fact that these players had an, a predisposed injury risk because of the pre-existing aberrant kinematics, then we might need to consider the coaching of these players at the younger age. So regardless of this, perhaps this is. Um, one explanation as to why we get such a high re-injury high re rate of groin pain in athletes, simply because they move differently. Thank you.